have to admit, the very first time that I opened Obsidian, I immediately quit and deleted the app. It just felt way too complicated to me. Eventually I came back and I gave it another shot because I was intrigued by the PKM promise of gaining insight and revelation from connecting my notes and ideas. But I failed yet again and I found that simply having all those links didn't just auto-magically unlock things the way that I expected it would. So once again, I quit and deleted the app. Now eventually I discovered the secret to making Obsidian work for me. I found a specific workflow that was useful. For me, that was building my own cross-reference library from all the sermon sketch notes that I've taken over the last seven years. Now, if you wanna actually see what that looks like, I have an Obsidian published site set up and you can find the link and the password in the description below if you wanna check it out for yourself. I know it's kinda of crazy, but maybe it will inspire a cool way for you to use the idea of Atomic Notes to make something useful. That's what I love about PKM. It's rare that I look at something and I think, I'm gonna do exactly that. But often I get inspired by something that someone else has done and then I go build the thing that I really wanted. But you can't do that when you're just adding the new shiny all the time. You have to get clear about how your PKM system is actually helping you make sense of things and create value. Now I believe your PKM system should free you to do your best creative work, but here is the truth. When it comes to PKM workflows, Less is often more, especially at the beginning. You have to start small with something simple, get that working, and then you can layer things on top of it. That's exactly what I did. And over the last five years that I've been using Obsidian, I've stacked many other workflows on top of that first one, including taking notes on all the books that I read, all of my personal retreats, my daily journaling routine, habit tracking, project planning, collecting quotes, taking meeting notes, and all of my writing, which includes articles, newsletters, outlines, and video scripts like this one. I even have Canvas dashboards for most of this stuff that helps tie what I'm actively working on to my vision and values. Now, not all the workflows that I've tried have stuck around. And I realized after a while that the ones that did connected back to my vision and values. That was the key to creating the motivation to consistently take action on the things that were important to me, and it gave me the clarity to cut the things that weren't. Because I'm a systems thinker, I started mapping it all out and I created a simple framework that I use to help me make sure that information can flow freely through all the parts of my PKM system. This framework has enabled me to get exponentially more out of my notes and ideas than I could have possibly done otherwise, and it's called the PKM stack. And in this video, I wanna share it with you and show you how I use it. Now first, let's consider the name. I call this the PKM stack because I find it helpful to compare the whole idea of PKM to a technology stack, which is a set of tools, platforms, and components, which is used by developers to create, develop, and deploy software applications. A software stack can include programming languages, frameworks, databases, backend and front-end tools, APIs, servers, and software that is all used for a single goal. All the components must tie together and information must flow seamlessly between all the different parts of the technology stack or the application just won't work. I believe this is the perfect model to describe the personal knowledge management process. Information comes in, follows a process as it flows between the different parts of your PKM system and then leaves and causes output or action. Now that output is really important. If you don't have an output, you will start to feel overwhelmed by everything that you've collected. Once you get clear on how information flows in your PKM system, then you can plug different apps into different parts of your PKM stack, but you need a clear understanding of how it all ties together so you can put the right pieces in the right places. You can hire the right apps for the right jobs. So let's break this down piece by piece. Now the first level of the PKM stack is information, and this is the stuff that you consume. This could be books that you read, videos you watch like this one, podcasts that you listen to, and most of this information doesn't require you to do anything with it. It's just something that you've read, you've watched, or you've listened to. Some of this information may be important someday and is worth sticking in an archive somewhere so you can dig it up when you need it, but most of it is temporal. It doesn't really matter in the long run. You can just discard it without any real ramifications. Now, some of the information that you consume, the higher quality stuff usually, will spark ideas, which leads us to the second level of the PKM stack. And this is the stuff that you need to develop. Personally, I believe you don't really know what an idea is when you first have it. You need to give it the ideal conditions for it to grow and mature. I have my own five-step process for developing my ideas that I call the creativity flywheel. It's a whole nother framework. 
but that's another topic for another day. The important thing here is that you need to have a greenhouse for your ideas where you can cultivate them until you're ready. And then the final step is to decide what these things mean for you and what you're gonna do about it. Now that leads us to the third level of the PKM stack, which is actions. And this is where you take action on those ideas and they become real. There's a couple types of actions here. There's one-off tasks, there's multi-step projects, there's habits, and then bundles of habits, which are called routines. Now you can split these into personal work if you'd like, but the whole concept of work-life balance is one I don't really agree with. There's really just your life and it's up to you to manage the different aspects of it well. Tasks and projects are usually things that are important and time-based, while the habits and routines tend to be things like journaling or going to the gym. They're important, but they're not really urgent. If you miss one, you're not really gonna be able to see any difference. Now, believe it or not, everything that happens at this level is initiated by either an idea you were presented with or information that you consumed, either intentionally or unintentionally. Now, being unintentional about the information that you consume causes you to live what I call a default life. That's one that's driven by outside forces. This causes you to consume more information because you're looking for the one thing that can make everything change for the better, the one key. That leads to FOMO and a general sense of overwhelm because there's just too much information in the world today for you to try and keep up with it all. So when you overconsume, you also don't have time to think about or develop any of the information that you've consumed. So you jump from one thing to the next, searching for that next hit of dopamine, which social networks are happy to provide you. Now this leads to a feeling that you just aren't creative because you have trouble coming up with ideas. Actually, you have trouble developing ideas, but it manifests as not feeling that you are creative because you compare your lack of output with all the stuff that you consume. And that comparison trap causes you to feel like you don't have the ability or the capacity to create, which I think is a myth. But then because we have trouble creating, which is really just thinking critically and connecting the dots, we feel that we have no agency or choice. We feel stuck doing things that we don't wanna do that lack meaning and are unfulfilling. Now notice how this approach works at PKM Stack from the bottom up. This is a very reactionary way to live and it's really stressful. But there is another way, a better way, though it requires another layer to be added on top of all this. And I call this top layer identity because it encapsulates who you are and who you wanna be. This layer is comprised of your vision and values for who you wanna be and what you want your life to look like. I actually have a piece of this I call my life theme, which is basically a one sentence summary of what I want my life to be about. So just as an example, here's my personal life theme. I help people find their why, multiply their time and talent, and leave a bigger dent in the universe. That's my why, the reason behind everything I do. I want to help people figure this stuff out for themselves so they can reach their full potential. And if you wanna dig deeper into this concept, I've actually got a free five-day email course that walks you through the life theme process. There's a link in the description below this video if you wanna sign up for it. Now, once you have your vision and your values, you then have the potential to flip the script on this default lifestyle. Once you get clear on that vision and values piece, you can start to select the actions that are in alignment with that identity that you've identified. Now, at this point, your actions aren't just something that you do, they become intentions. And now you may not actually change any of those actions, but the way that you go about them is going to be different because you'll infuse meaning and purpose into your tasks, your projects, your habits, and your routines because you can see how they're moving you in the right direction towards your ideal future. And this additional excitement will spark curiosity, which is going to then cause you to have more and better ideas, though I still advocate for a system to develop them fully, and then finally, you'll be more selective about the information that you consume because you now have a filter for helping you decide what's useful and what's not. So instead of feeling anxiety and stress from FOMO, you can embrace another concept called JOMO, the joy of missing out by selecting the things that are beneficial and then dismissing all of the things that aren't. This top-down approach I call the intentional life. Now, once you've made that switch, the default life to the intentional life, it doesn't just stay that way. You can't set it and forget it. You gotta fight to keep it. And that's why a regular reflection practice is so valuable. You need to consistently be asking yourself what's working, what's broken, and how do I fix it? Now, journaling is a big part of this for me, but the thing that really makes this stick is my quarterly personal retreat. I walk through the whole process and share my Obsidian template that I use for my personal retreats in this other video, so go check that out if you wanna know more about the personal retreat process.
But now that you understand how the PKM stack works, the next step is to document your own PKM stack. For this, you need to first identify all of the different jobs to be done at each level of the PKM stack, and then next, select the app or tool that you're going to hire for each role. Now, I know this is conceptual, but it's really important to get clear on this. You have to understand what you're trying to accomplish at each stage so that you can hire the right app for the right job. You need to know the role that each app plays in the flow of information into and out of your PKM system, which then will help you see where the holes are in your current workflows so that you can figure out a way to fix them. And that's where learning about new apps and new tools and new plugins can actually be beneficial. Now, let me give you an example by sharing the apps in my own PKM stack. So first, I use DevonThink as my archive for a lot of different things. If I get something that I know I need to hang on to, but I'm not gonna do anything with it right now, I'm gonna throw it in DevonThink. Next, I use Obsidian for my personal tasks and projects, which fits into the actions level. I use Notion for work tasks, which again fits into that actions level. And I use Morgan for my events and meetings, which again is in that actions level. I use Drafts as my quick capture tool, which captures anything that might be important, but usually falls into the information or ideas buckets. I use my node for book notes and for visual thinking, both of which are in the ideas level. I use good notes for my sketch notes, which again is fodder for the ideas level of this PKM stack. I use Readwise Reader as my RSS reader and my Read It Later service, which both may spark ideas. And finally, we get back to Obsidian, which I consider to be the hub of my PKM stack because that's where I put my notes, where I develop my ideas by writing, and where I do all of my journaling and reflection. Now, the goal with identifying what jobs the apps we use are doing is to eliminate as much cruft as possible from our PKM stack. We want to minimize the friction so the information can flow freely. The question we're asking ourselves as we consider our tools is, how does this technology or app support the things that are important to me? We want to work backwards from our values instead of forward from our default actions. Once we do that, it's a lot easier to figure out which workflows are actually valuable and which ones just look cool. So that's the PKM stack, and hopefully this framework inspires you to do an audit of your own PKM system and figure out which things are useful and which things are just adding unnecessary complexity. Now, if you're a little intimidated by the thought of doing this for yourself, I get it, but it is a very valuable exercise. And if you want some help, I've actually got a four-week practical PKM cohort that's starting up on January 27th. It's not cheap, but everyone who joins will also get Life HQ, my epic done-for-you Obsidian Vault with all my PKM stack-related workflows pre-built, access to all my video courses, and a year of access to my private community called the library. That way, you've got a foundation to build on as we work our way through the cohort, and you have the opportunity to continue to ask questions as you refine your custom PKM system after the cohort ends. The community also gives you access to weekly co-working calls, accountability for those who need a little support hitting their goals, and all of my book notes. If that sounds interesting to you, you can find out more and sign up before January 27th by going to join.practicalpkm.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in another video.